Welcome back to our Lenten series on walking through the scripture and seeing how the cross is portrayed throughout the Bible. We've gone through Genesis and we're near the end of Exodus. Did you realize that there were so many chapters in Exodus that were on really one subject? And that subject was the construction of the tabernacle. We're going to use this tabernacle to show you that in this tabernacle is a picture of the cross. Not only the cross, but it's a perfect um, illustration of our experience in growing in the Lord. Now, I've left these intentionally loose because they're part of our story as well. The tabernacle consists of an outer court and the brazen altar where the sacrifices were made and the laver before the tent proper. These layers of skins and covering are important because the first skin represents sacrifices of animals. Now, let me see if I can peel them off one at a time so you can see them individually. If I peel that first one off, the next one is a ring skin dyed red. Now, why do you think it was dyed red? It's a ram skin dyed red. I'm going to ask you a question. If you have been following this series, you'll remember that in Genesis, the 22nd chapter, we said that it was a most beautiful account of God's love for us in giving his only son. It was the story of Abraham and Isaac, that Abraham was asked to offer his son Isaac. It was a picture, a type, a shadow of the cross, the father giving Jesus. But remember Abraham said, God will provide the offering. He would provide the lamb and then God showed him in that crucial moment that there was a ram caught in the thicket. The ram skin dyed red is pointing back to that and a head. Oh, yes, a head to Jesus being that sacrifice. Now, when the blood is applied to our lives, then the next piece of covering is Look at how white, white linen. He had made white our sins so they'd be uh, dark and ominous that we have the white linen. We're washed whiter than snow. And this is just a very crude covering on the inside. It's a beautiful tapestry with angels, and that is seen from the tabernacle proper. I will just remove these out of the way so that we might be able to look at the construction a little bit. Um, I hope that as I put this up like this, you're able maybe to see inside. Are you able to see way inside the holy place? the holy place. Now we have three pieces of furniture. We have the table of showbread, the candelabra, and we have the altar of incense. Behind this veil, behind the veil is the most holy place with the Ark of the Covenant. And that is a very holy place that represents the throne room of God. Well, if you look, if you follow my finger and go right straight up, we see a straight line. 
But then in the holy place, if you look at the table of showbread and the candle arbor, we are forming a cross. I'll let you think about that. Furniture here, furniture there forms a cross. There's also a picture of what the cross means to us. If we believe in Jesus and we say, Lord, I believe you died for us because Jesus died and he fulfilled all the sacrifices of, that were brought on this altar. When we receive Christ as our Savior, that's just the beginning of our journey towards heaven. Remember that the most holy place represents the throne room of God in heaven. Mm. The labor speaks about the washing of the word. So how do we enter into his holiness? We enter into his holiness by getting a passion for his word. And as we read his word, the blood has washed us from our sins and we're born again. But daily washings, we, we wash our hands and we wash our feet and then we can enter in because in the Old Testament time, only the priests were allowed in to the holy place. And only the high priest was allowed into the most holy place. But we have had the way made open so that we can come in and have fellowship with the Lord, that we can have the light because Jesus is the light of the world. And the altar of incense, it's our prayers. Our prayers are going right up into the very presence of the Lord. Now, there's much more that we can say about the tabernacle. There's so many truths that are wrapped up in this illustration. But we only can give you that teaser today. I hope that will give you a curiosity maybe to do a little bit more digging yourself into God's word and into a study on the tabernacle. But this is a picture of the cross and what the cross has opened up for us. It has opened up the way all the way to heaven. Are you happy about that? I'm trusting you are. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for the truths that are so locked up in your word. And you want so much to reveal to our lives and our hearts those truths. God, may this short outline just cause those that listen to want to go deeper and to learn more of your word and more of the truths in the tabernacle. In Jesus' name, amen.